So this talk is about uh, OSS 7, which is an open source uh, implementation of the Dash 7 communication stack. And uh, <coughs> I'm just going to leave uh, Glenn the floor. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, it's very nice being here. I was here a lot of times before, but comfortably sitting in the audience. Uh, now it's uh, new for me standing here. But anyway, um, I work at the IDLAB Research Group of the University of Antwerp and IMEC. And our part of the group is doing uh, low power communication and localization. And it is in, in this context that we got uh, into contact with uh, the Dash 7 Alliance, where we, actively, where we are an, an active member in the Alliance and also driving the open source stack, which is uh, the topic of today. So the Dash 7 spec is uh, originating from uh, ISO 18000 Dash 7, so hence the name. And that was uh, purely focused on active RFID. In this new evolution of the spec, um, we try to make it more generic for IoT use cases. Um, it's focused on sub gigahertz bands and it's using a star or tree topology, so we're not using a meshing. Um, currently, we're at version 1.1 of the spec published uh, about one year ago. So, some key aspects without going too deep into the, the specification itself um, it's focused on low power communication and asynchronous communication. and there's a lot of functionality embedded in the stack, as we will see uh, see later. Um, also, basically, in Dash 7, everything is a file. This is configuration of the stack itself, but also sensor values are stored in a file. This is also the main application interface you would use from your application or from an external uh, node. Uh, you would do uh, familiar operations like read file or write file uh, to, the, to manage the, 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 the stack, in fact. Um, this is done using ALP commands, which is just an efficient binary uh, representation of these uh, operations. What I have right here is uh, an off-the-shelf dev kit from ST, which is running a Dash 7 modem on, on it. Um, it's connected with my laptop using a USB, and on this serial connection we, we talk this uh, ALP command set. On the laptop we have a Python framework called PyD7A, and it basically does a translation to and from ALP. So I'll, uh, I'll be doing a few demos uh, somewhere uh, between the presentation, so I'll be switching over a few times. Uh, okay. If I can find it. Yeah. Um, so the, the Python framework uh, also has a, a small user interface which we, uh, which we use to manage the modem. So now it's connected with this, uh, this module here. And here, for instance, you can browse some system files which are defined there. And you can view here, for instance, this contains a UID. Uh, there's a firmware version file. Uh, there's an access profile which defines uh, some channel bands and, and some uh, data rate and stuff like that. So this is just a view on the file system which we now query using this uh, ALP command. You can also uh, execute a command uh, like this. You can just say I read file, I want to read file zero and execute and you would get the UID file here. I don't know if it's visible. No. Um, okay. So on the other hand, I have uh, Two nodes here, which are the same dev kit, but they have a shield, a shield on top of it containing sensors. For instance, a temperature sensor. sensor. So the application running on, on this is very simple, and this is basically everything. This is, this is uh, on the application layer. Uh, we just read the temperature value from the sensor, and we write it in a file on the Dash 7 file system, in a specific file for, uh, for this temperature value. And then we reschedule it again to do this periodically every 10 seconds. So this is everything there is at the application layer, and the rest is managed uh, by the stack. And we'll be using this application throughout the demo. So if I go back to this uh, UI, I can now, uh, instead of using the host interface, which is the, the local module connected over the serial, I can execute the same command through, through the Dash 7 interface. I forward it to the Dash 7 interface. I specify it, this takes some configuration, for instance, how to access the node, and then, then it will execute the same command, which was the read UID on this other, uh, on this other interface. And I started it. Yeah, so as you can see, we now have two responses, which are from these nodes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's fully transparent. You execute the same commands to a no local node as to a remote node. 
also, uh, I mentioned that um, we were writing a temperature file. It, it's just in another file. So if I take file 64, and I happen to know it's two bytes long, I can just read out the temperature data just as I would read out the UID of the node. So here you see the two bytes uh, coming in. Uh, these are the raw bytes. We don't parse it here because it's not uh, a system-defined file. It's something, it's user-specific. So I'll show later how you can, can visualize it. But here are the, uh, the, the temperature of the two nodes. Okay. So what happens here is uh, this is our uh, sensor node. The application is basically writing the sensor file continuously or periodically. It writes the sensor file uh, and the rest is managed by the dash seven stack. So here we have the interrogator, which was this node here. It, it just executes a command to read sensor file. The stack will receive it, will read the sensor file, and will retransmit or will uh, answer the, the data. So the application doesn't know. The application is totally unaware of this happening. This is what we call the, the pool communication scheme. And it's useful if you want to request the data only when, when needed. So for instance, on an external event like um, a door closes and you want to query all the nodes inside, or a user pressing a button on the, the UI, then pool communication makes sense. <coughs> you can also interrogate multiple responders at once. <coughs> Sorry. Now, how does this happen? Um, as I said, it's used for low power and asynchronous networking. So the, the nodes there can't be continuously listening because they would consume too much power. And they're not synchronized as well. So what we do is an ad hoc synchronization. Um, I can show this like this. I, I hope it is visible. Um, but it's a, a screenshot of logic analyzer where you have the top two uh, rows are the requester and the, the, the top one is the transmission and then we have the, the reception, the RX. And then the same thing for, for two responders. And here you can see that the responders will uh, go into RX mode periodically. They will uh, scan the channel for uh, background frames. And the other one does that as well and you can see it happens asynchronously compared to the other one. So there's scan for background frame. What is a background frame? It basically contains an estimated time of arrival of the foreground frame which will follow. So it's used for synchronization. So they go into receive mode. They check if the, the energy on the channel is above the noise floor or not. If it isn't, they go asleep as soon as possible. If it is, they, they try to decode the background frame. And when they receive that, they go back asleep until this timeout passes. So if you want to transmit the query as a requester, you would basically, here, and it happens here, flood the channel with background frames for a period which is the same amount of time or a bit bigger than the scan, on, scan interval. So during one second, this background, uh, the requester will send these background frames and it will basically count down. And you will see here, I don't know if it's visible, but this, this uh, here is a bit wider than, than this other one because here it actually receives the background frame. So at this point in time, this node knows that the request will be sent here. And the same thing happens here. And now, basically, they are synchronized. So the request will be transmitted here. They will both be in, in receive mode here. And then they will uh, respond here using CSMA CA, will respond to the, to the requester. <coughs> so this is uh, ad hoc synchronization or low power listening. What we also support is uh, push communication. Uh, push communication is useful for uh, when your tech needs to talk first. For instance, here we measure the temperature every 10 seconds. Imagine that we would require to capture all these measurements. It wouldn't make sense to go query them every 10 seconds. Uh, we can just as well let the node send them to us and push them, push it to us uh, every 10 seconds. Now you can. You can code this in the application layer, uh, of course, but Dash 7 provides a more generic way to do this without touching the application, and that's called uh, the action protocol. <coughs> so this is the same diagram where the application writes the sensor file, but now we configure the sensor file to trigger the action protocol when written. So an action protocol takes two more files. It takes an action file and an interface file. An action file is the action which will be executed, an interface file is, specifies where the output of the action should go to. So if we now, before we had our query here saying read sensor file data, if we now 
uh, we are not sending this right now because we're doing push communication, but we're storing it inside of the action file. So when the file is written, the stack will execute the read file command, so it will return 21 degrees, and it will be transmitted over the interface which is specified here, where you can say it's transmit on this channel using a security or whatever, and it will transmit the file. So basically what we did is we, we removed this one, but we pre-registered it in the node, and it will be triggered because it's configured that way. So I can demo this. Uh, I will not be using the UI to configure this now, but I will be using the, the API. So I have some, some script which will do this. I will make it a big bigger. Okay, so I use this script which uses the Python API, and you can see it reconfigured uh, two nodes. So I can also show this uh, in a dashboard. This is a things board which we use for dashboarding. So now you can see data coming in from, uh, from two more nodes. So it's 21 degrees depending on the node here, 21 or 23. Uh, things board is an, an uh, open source uh, platform we use for dashboarding and for managing our our devices, uh, so all our devices are here and also a digital twin as mentioned before. Uh, but I'm not going to into much details about this. Okay, now ALP has some more operations except from read and write, you can also do queries. For instance, you can do an arithmetic comparison between uh, a value in a file and a value you provide. And you can, you can chain uh, ALP actions and the, the result of this query operation will determine if further actions are being executed or not. So I'll give an example later but you can use this for, for some smart addressing. Instead of addressing a node by ID you would say I want all nodes of type A or all nodes where uh, the humidity is below this and the temperature is uh, be below that for instance. Um, we could also use this to extend our demo a bit further. So now we're transmitting the, the temperature every 10 seconds, but imagine that 23 degrees is considered normal and we also want, only want an alarm when it's above 25 degrees, for instance. Then all these messages would be a waste of energy right now. So if we could just have this, this condition stored in the query uh, like this, so we will prepend the, the query before the, the read action and the read action will only be executed when the query is yields true. So, uh, okay, I'll show this now. I use the same script that I can provide it with a, with a parameter now. I'm going to check what the temperature is. So it's uh, 23 degrees. So let's say 23.5 and it changes Again, it just changes the configuration over the air of the, of the files. The application isn't aware, but you see no new data is uh, coming in right now. now. Of course, to prove that it will, I need to uh, increase the temperature, <laughs> which I hope it does now. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> okay, it's uh, even off scale. <laughs> um, so back to the presentation. So yeah, what we did was we just modified this file, and again, the application wasn't uh, wasn't aware that we're doing it, and still we 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 modified the the behavior of our network. Uh. Okay. So to recap, we have two main communication schemes where we use push when you have periodic data or sen sensor trigger data, and pull if you want to do want to trigger or want to query on some external event, basically. Uh, in practice, you would use a combination of both. You would uh, enable pull to to um, to configure the node, and you would push most data, which is uh, yeah, triggered by the sensor. There are also some other options which I didn't mention uh, a lot, uh, or which I didn't go into detail. But um, for instance, you can have dormant sessions for non-urgent downlink, or you could have uh, configure your gateway to do uh, scan channeling very fast on. Uh, a few channels and then uh, your node would pick a random channel and it would do a very small advertising frame to uh, lock your gateway which would give you some uh, some frequency agility and uh, increased throughput for instance so I only I only mentioned a, a very small part of the stack but uh, here you can see per layer uh, a few concepts which are there 
Um, so for instance, you have uh, quality of service, power auto scaling, uh, one up routing, network layer, AS encryption. Uh, we have uh, three different data rates at three different bands, uh, sub gigahertz bands. Um, there's also uh, LoRa in gray. Why is it in gray? It isn't part of the, the spec by itself. So, uh, but we use it uh, ju yeah, just to test the LoRa file beneath it and it doesn't change anything ab above the spec. So um, I, I talked a lot in general about uh, Dash 7. OSS Dash 7 is uh, basically the open source implementation of this. So the goal is to be a reference implementation for the spec. And we want to generate interest in the spec and have people testing it and, and contributing. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub. It's a patch license tool. So it's very uh, useful for uh, commercial products as well. Um, and without going too much into detail, uh, the architecture is a bit like this, where you have a hardware abstraction layer, uh, which has some APIs, and you have uh, different drivers for uh, MCU peripherals and for radios. And they're glued together basically by something called a platform, where you can specify a combination of drivers, and you uh, specify the wiring on the, the physical board. So the platform is more or less your physical board. And they have a framework uh, component which contains uh, logging and uh, scheduling, for instance. Uh, and then the modules contains the network stack. So we have the Dash 7 uh, stack there. Uh, we also re recently added uh, the LoRa 1 stack to test with uh, multimodality. And then in terms of hardware, we focus now mainly on the Murata module, which is also the module which is uh, used here. So it's uh, an STM32L0 uh, microcontroller using a uh, Semtech uh, chip on, uh, on one module, which is very easy to integrate. You need a minimal amount of uh, external components, and you just put it on, on, uh, on the board. Um, especially if you, have an, if you have an existing board where your application is running on one microcontroller, you can add this Murata module uh, and use it as a Dash 7 modem. And then it's very easy to integrate since your application does not interfere with the stack timings and vice versa. And also it could uh, make it easier to, to do certification because your modem can be certified separately. So that was the, the firmware part. We also have some related tools. The PyD7A uh, framework I already mentioned. So parser and generator for uh, ALP frames. ALP or frames, uh, sorry, but it also contains a modem API which is used to, to interact with, uh, with the modem. Uh, there's some examples and tools and a, a basic web UI. And then we also have the, the ThingsBoard gateway which was used for uh, injecting the data in uh, ThingsBoard. So in that also uses PyD7A to talk with the modem, but on the other hand implements the MQTT API of uh, ThingsBoard and uh, it allows you to yeah, to transmit your telemetry data and to uh, manage your, your devices. Also, for the ThingsBoard Gateway, you can provide very simple plugins to parse your sensor data, which is why here we show the temperature data and not the two bytes you saw before. They're just parsed uh, before entering the ThingsBoard platform, uh, and it enters there as temperature data. And then finally, we have a, a test suite. Uh, which is uh, running on physical modems, so we, we attach it to a, to a PC and uh, we execute some tests uh, which are written in Python and also using the Python framework, uh, and that's driven by, uh, by Jenkins. The goal there is to test the full uh, behavior of the, of the spec and of the stack, uh, but yeah, we're not quite there yet, but it's still useful already. The next steps, um, we're not feature complete yet uh, to the, the current version of the spec. We're working on it, but we're now at the point where a lot of pieces of the puzzles are actually available and you could do a lot of things with uh, the current implementation already. But still, we need to progress this further. In the meantime, we're also discussing version 1.2 of the specification, so this needs to be implemented as well, of course. Um, then what we want to provide next also is to make it easier to interface from an application microcontroller with the modem. So we want to provide a, a C modem uh, library uh, and also enable over-the-air uh, updates, which is one, one big advantage of Dash 7 that you have a, a, a low latency downlink to, to do this actually. Um, then finally, we want to enable porting to other operating systems. So OSS 7, uh, was there for historical reasons, uh, but we're not 
very interested in developing the operating system by ourselves. So maintaining the scheduler or the, the hardware abstraction layer is not our goal. So ideally, we want to 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 port this to another uh, operating system. And we're looking into that. We also we we did some first step uh, steps with Riot. So maybe in the future we will be using Riot. We'll see. So that's about it. I have a few links here uh, to the documentation to get you started to the code, to the mailing list and Twitter. And also you can download the spec for free from the Alliance website. So that was it. Questions? Yeah. <coughs> you mentioned uh, uh, the uh, uh, star topology. Uh, the mesh uh, topology is not possible or? It's not specified, so um, it's not that it's not possible, but it's not the, the way how to do routing, for instance, it's not specified in the spec. So what we do is uh, in each star or tree, so using one hop at most, is in, in the, uh, handled in the specification, but if you want to do r more complex routing or meshing, then it will need to be handled by, a, by an upper layer. So it's not something we, we support for now. Also because the, due to the fact that we're using sub gigahertz, you can do you cover quite a lot of range with uh, on only one hop, so um, meshing is not that necessary anymore. And yeah, it would require more synchronization, of course. So uh, yeah. the files you were writing to reconfigure the device, are you storing them permanently on the device, or is this just in RAM? Or how yeah. That can you, can you also repeat my question for the video recording? Okay, so the question was if the, the files we're writing, uh, where are they stored? Are they stored in RAM or are they stored more permanently? The answer is right now they're stored in RAM, uh, but they should be stored uh, in a more permanent uh, setting, uh, depending on the file. Uh, you, you could configure, you have a transient file. Files which 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 change uh, which uh, um, yeah w w for instance uh, 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 um, something coming from a uh, sensor you could just as well uh, keep in RAM because you will just read it again but uh, configuration files of course need to be stored in a, uh, ROM but that's some some things which is uh, on our to do list which is not there yet for the moment so right now it's in RAM everything is in RAM and how do you define who is allowed to write which file? Um, there's a concept of uh, a, a remote node is always a guest by default, and you have yeah, you have access uh, uh, permissions of uh, a guest user and root. So remote user is a guest, uh, then the local user is is uh, the the root by default, and a serial over the serial uh, link is uh, the user. Uh, so you have some permissions there. Right. More questions or not? Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you.